Okay. So thank you very much um, for the invitation. I'm happy to be here today. Uh, it's my first time to Russia, so it's very exciting. And um, uh, as you already announced, I'm the chair of radiation oncology at the Technical University in Munich. And I'm also the chair of a research institute. It's called uh, Institute of Innovative Radiotherapy. It's located also in Munich, uh, not at the university, but the, at the Helmholtz uh, Center in Munich. So we have the possibility to transfer new techniques, new concepts from IRT to the clinic. And as you can see in our clinic logo, uh, I always like to state that radiation oncology really is a mixture of doctors, biologists, informatics, and physicists. Yeah? And that's really what makes a radiation oncology uh, active. So I'm going to talk about millimeter um, precision, single fraction, fractionated treatment. I'm going to focus on brain metastasis. The first talk was actually on brain metastasis, so we might have a little overlap. Um, but I think it's a nice paradigm to explain um, what concepts we have in radiation oncology. If we look at patients with brain metastasis in the past, we said, well, it's a palliative setting. All patients need whole brain radiotherapy, and then sort of the paradigm shifted, and we said, well, we have to differentiate patients with multiple metastases and patients with one to three brain metastases. And then, of course, the surgeons um, stepped up and said, if you can operate a brain med, you should operate on it, and then we have a long-term local control. But now if we look at the clinical data um, from this study, I'm going to go into the, 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 the details of the study later, but I just took this graph to show that surgery, of course, is an effective treatment to take out the brain med, and of course we should do it if it's a symptomatic matter, maybe if it's one um, single lesion. But if we don't do any additional treatment, meaning no whole brain radiotherapy, no radiosurgery or other, um, we follow this yellow curve, meaning we have a very high rate of local control, comparing it to radiosurgery or whole brain um, radiotherapy. So what I'm trying to say is that surgery alone, of course, is very effective. But um, it's not the end um, of the question, and there is a, the high rate um, of side effects. And we, as radiation oncologists, who see these patients, have to look on how we can increase local control and perhaps how we can do it by having an acceptable, acceptable toxicity. So what did we do in the past? Of course, the patient had surgery or didn't have surgery, at least had brain metastasis. We did whole brain radiotherapy. And um, if you look in all the data we have in the literature, I guess they all show high local control, and they all have the benefit of high local regional control, meaning they not only cure or um, control the brain mat that is present, but they also prevent um, new brain metastasis um, from developing. So I guess this is a very nice effect, but what at price um, are paying, are we paying this effect? And one main downside, of course, is the development of neurocognitive side effects. And many studies have shown us that after whole brain radiotherapy, especially if you go to high single doses, patients have a risk of developing neurocognitive side effects, especially the patients who are long-term survival. Classical patient, a female patient, young patient, breast cancer, one brain met. You treat her with whole brain radiotherapy, she survives five years, and she is the person uh, certainly at risk to develop neurocognitive side effects. So this is something um, we really have to um, keep in mind. And then, of course, we have um, these questions saying, well, if we do whole brain, do we need an additional local treatment and so on? And there are some studies um, that have looked at this question and have shown that especially patients with one brain med really benefit from an additional local treatment. Then again, I think we have to go back and not throw brain metastasis into one pot. I think we have to look at the histology, at the underlying histology. We probably all agree that a patient with a small cell lung cancer, we don't really talk about radiosurgery, we immediately go um, to uh, whole brain radiotherapy. But within all the other um, histologies, we have to subdivide. And this is a very easy scheme, but I think it, it's nice to explain what, I'm, what I have in the back of my mind. We have these patients that have, well, a low progression rate, um, maybe let's call it a low aggressivity, and a good prognosis. Again, talking about the breast cancer patient with a one brain lesion. And then on the other hand, um, we have um, patients maybe 
also thinking about the radioresistant histology, melanoma histology, where we know, well, the melanomas have a radiation resistance. They have the tendency to be aggressive and come back after fractionated treatment. This is a group of patients on the right where we should have more intensive treatment and where the patient might benefit from the different biology um, behind radiosurgery. And that brings me with a trigger word biology to what I think is the most important basis on what we decide in radiation. So it's not just the concept of having different techniques available, it really is biology. This is a very old uh, graph of Hermann Holthusen, of course you all know, and what he described still holds true today for each tumor and each tumor type. We have a dose response probability, meaning we need a certain dose to control the lesion. And this curve is very distinct for every tumor type, meaning lymphomas are probably really somewhere here between 20, well, maybe 20 and 40 gray, depending on the subtype. And then we have the ones above 50, 60, and 70 gray, where the curve would probably move up here, melanoma, sarcoma, osteosarcoma, and so on. And that's why it's important for us as radiation oncologists to know what is the underlying tumor and this is what makes it difficult sometimes, at least in Germany, in the tumor boards, if we have a patient diagnosed with some kind of cancer and there is no histological classification. The first thing we as radiation oncologists say is we want to know what it is because it has a consequence on what we do. The problem is we have this same dose-response relationship um, for normal tissue. And of course, what happens in normal tissue? Side effects. And that is essentially something we, want, we don't want to have. And um, so we also have to know these dose-response relationships for all of the normal tissues um, because um, this really guides the dose we can give to the tumor. And of course, all the developments we had in radiation oncology aimed at improving um, this therapeutic window. If we talk about brain metastasis and we talk about systemic treatments, um, I'm not going to go into the biology in detail, but just to keep in mind, we have all these new substances you can give besides chemotherapy, pembrolizumab, and so on. Um, all these new molecular targeted agents. And the problem with these curves is we know what we do when treating with radiation alone, but in some cases, we don't know what we do if we add a systemic treatment. And if we add this systemic treatment, we can move these curves, and unfortunately not only the local control curve, but also the toxicity curve yeah, in both directions. So if you have a patient with brain metastasis and you follow your knowledge and your concepts and the internal medicine oncologists tell you, we give uh, systemic treatments. Additionally, you should keep this in mind and talk to the patient and tell them what you're doing because potentially you might um, change something on the side effect um, profile. So what are we doing in radiation oncology today? Of course, um, we all treat based on 3D imaging, uh, CT, MRI based, and depending on the underlying disease, of course, PET. We have high precision radiotherapy available, especially radio surgery, fractionated stereotactic treatments, all these things we need today to treat patients with brain metastasis. Then we have the special techniques, IMRT, particle therapy, probably not that much in focus if we think about brain med patients, and um, the terms image-guided and adaptive radiotherapy, probably also for the brain med patients, not um, the first thing we would think about, um, but still especially IGRT, um, very important. I'm going to show you why it can also be important for a brain med um, patients. Then, of course, we have stereotactic uh, radiotherapy available. And um, I'd like to show this slide because um, stereotactic radiotherapy was not primarily developed by the radiation oncologist. It was developed by a neurosurgeon by Lars Lexell in, in Sweden. And he developed the gamma knife. And of course, we, today we can do radio surgery not only with the gamma knife cyber knife, but we have uh, special other uh, techniques available, especially equipped linear accelerators and Novalis system and so on, where we can uh, apply um, radio surgery. But what I think is nice to see that the development was in conjunction with a neighboring discipline, really underlining that radiation oncology is very um, interactive. With radiosurgery, um, we can treat in a single fraction, non-invasive, quick treatment, but we have to keep in mind that the risk for side effect can increase 
um, as the volume of the lesion increases. And then, of course, we can move um, to fractionated treatments, um, which, of course, uh, today is available with the mask uh, systems and imaging um, for a precision verification. I brought uh, one patient with uh, brain matter, actually a breast cancer, a patient that I treated um, with a radio surgery, um, this lesion, short treatment time, non-invasive, 20 grade to the 80% isodose. And this is the follow-up two years um, after treatment. So very nice uh, local control. The patient is um, doing fine, a very um, effective um, treatment. And then now let's look into the clinical um, data. We're talking about precision treatments and um, whole brain radiotherapy and which patients would we want to offer radiosurgery. And this trial by the EORTC actually tried to answer this question. Patients with one to three brain uh, metastases were included. They randomized um, between radiosurgery or surgery afterwards to whole brain radiotherapy and a wait and see strategy. Basically trying to answer the question, do we need whole brain radiotherapy? And at least in Germany, this data changed the paradigm of what we do with um, patients with brain metastases um, today because the data nicely showed no difference in overall survival, meaning there is no survival benefit for whole brain radiotherapy. However, if we look onto local control and local regional control on the right, of course, there is a benefit in terms um, of local regional, local control, meaning that the patients don't develop new brain metastasis. And I think this is important if you have a patient with one to three brain meds, counsel them about this data, at least that's what we do in Germany. And there are some patients who say, we want whole brain because we want maximal safety. There are not many. Most of them would really opt for radio surgery. So that's why I said it really was a changing a paradigm um, in Germany. Of course, what the study also showed is by adding um, whole brain radiotherapy, we have some minor transient reduction in cognitive functioning and also quality of life. It's minor, it's transient, but still it's there. And if you have a patient with a reduced life expectancy, I think uh, that's an important factor to keep in mind. What are risk factors for the development of neurocognitive side effects? And that's important because I'm going to show you some measures how we can work against it. Um, there is not a lot of data from brain meds, but most data from glioma um, patients. And um, what they basically showed, um, that patient age has an impact, meaning older patients have a higher risk um, to develop side effects. It's the treatment volume and the dose. So high single doses um, can have a significant impact. So if you want to be on the beneficial side in whole brain radiotherapy, I would always recommend um, two gray single doses. And then, of course, and this is important, the irradiation of distinct regions in the brain. And this is something that came up in the last two or three years, that, for example, the limbic system, the hippocampus, are the regions that can be responsible for the development of side effects, and those are regions that you could spare or can spare um, with modern techniques. And the downside is there is few data from randomized trials, um, not because the trials are not available, because it's also very difficult um, to assess um, neurocognitive side effects. There is one nice study actually um, evaluating also a medical treatment in conjunction with radiotherapy. I'm not going to go into that, but what the study shows is that neurocognitive impairment can all be related to radiation, of course, but neurocognitive impairment can also be associated with the brain mat. And this is also something you have to keep in mind when counseling the patient. The study showed nicely that patients, whole brain radiotherapy, responding well, meaning the metastasis got smaller, went away, had a benefit in terms of neurocognition. Yeah? These are the good responders here, always the yellow curve, had a preservation or an improvement in neurocognition. So the response by radiation can also be beneficial. So it's not just the side effect part um, that you keep, have to keep in mind. And what the study showed is that this study, that long-term survivors had a preserved neurocognitive um, function. So it's not all um, that bad after all. 
So if we sum all that up before we go into some new concepts, well, of course, with whole brain radiotherapy, we have improvement in local regional control, no question. Um, we may have neurocognitive side effects. How we can address those, we will see. In histology, well, with the two or three gray single doses, we might be more effective with radiosurgery. Thinking about the melanoma, the radio-resistant histology, probably a high single dose um, would be more um, effective. We have less side effects on the radiosurgery side, but again, local regional um, control. So now, radiosurgery might be in favor if we think about these patients. So which, which patients would we classically um, offer radiosurgery? There is probably consent in the room, one to three brain mats, maybe four, um, diameter under four centimeters, because we have this volume side effect ratio. Alternative to surgery or inoperability, perhaps in combination with whole brain if you have that one single lesion, radiosurgery alone, or also recurrence after whole brain radiotherapy. So this is basically the classical oligometastasized um, patient we're talking about, and I already showed you uh, this, this typical patient of a very classical radiosurgery um, case. You can also combine. And I brought um, one patient, was a breast cancer patient that had four brain metastases. She had a large um, lesion and three smaller um, lesions. And again, we talked about whole brain versus local treatment. And in this case, um, we decided to do a combination. We did radio surgery for the smaller lesions with 20 gray to the 80% isodose. And we did a fractionated treatment in that case to the large volume because the volume was too large for us, we felt, um, to do radio surgery. And she was really doing well and she was not in favor of whole brain radiotherapy. So looking back, probably it was the best decision um, to do that. And I brought another case because there is a question we have to look at. We talked about resected brain mats and additive whole brain radiotherapy. Do we have to really do additive whole brain radiotherapy? Unfortunately, I'm sorry, this slide is in German, but I will translate it for you. It was a patient with a brain mat with a cholangiocellular cellular carcinoma, and the patient had one brain metastasis. And um, what happened is the patient went to surgery, which was a Good decision in that case. We have preoperative images and postoperative images. And then the patient came to my clinic and said, what do we do now? Do I have to do whole brain radiotherapy? And I said, well, we have one lesion, actually no. And she said, well, what do we do if it comes back? Because who can guarantee that this lesion is completely resected and that there are no remnant cells that might grow again? So what we did is um, stereotactic treatment of the resection cavity in seven fractions, seven times five gray. We treated the resection cavity in two millimeters um, safety margin. And um, the patient is still coming to my clinic one year, three years after treatment, doing well. She's a school teacher, so um, she's doing really um, fine. So the question is, is that a new concept? Are there studies? And I looked and checked the literature, and of course there are some studies, not large randomized trials, and there is this also this very provocative um, title, radiosurgery to the postoperative surgical cavity, who needs evidence? Well, in the end, as I already said, we have infiltration and remnant cells, and um, we know that whole brain radiotherapy has benefits, but also side effects. And um, so um, this paper nicely concludes that actually we don't need evidence, we can do it, radiosurgery to the resection cavity, but at the moment in our institution we're again evaluating that in a prospective trial to really consolidate the data. Now we had the classical, the operated patients, we had the classical one to three or maybe four brain med patients treated with radiosurgery, and then we have these other patients. We have the ones with four lesions and more, small lesions, um, not a, non, a small cell lung cancer, but the ones with the histology where in the end you say they would benefit from radiosurgery. What do we do with these patients? And I looked um, in the literature, there are um, few data, most of them are from, from gamma knife um, centers. This is a study um, including patients with 10 or more um, brain metastasis, treating them with radiosurgery, showing um, really nice local control, and what they showed is a cutoff 
uh, at 14 metastasis where they say, well, this is when prognosis sort of turns and you maybe should switch to whole brain radiotherapy. I think there can be much um, discussion on um, that. And this is a single arm multicenter phase two st study, also including patients with multiple um, brain mats, trying to um, evaluate um, benefits. And, and these, uh, that, that data nicely showed that the group one to three patients and four to 10 patients had a difference in survival in prognosis. So maybe the paradigm we have saying one to three, maybe four brain mats are the right patients for radio surgery are the correct ones or maybe it's just a study bias, but it's nicely um, reflected um, again in that study. And another a patient, uh, or another study from Japan um, looking at radiosurgery, also with brain metastasis, showed a cutoff at nine metastasis, saying two to nine is something you should treat with radiosurgery, 10 or more you probably shouldn't, um, but still, again, this is a single center study and not that many um, patients included. Here you can see uh, the differences between the groups. And then another group from Japan, um, having a cutoff at one to four versus five lesions, which again reflects the classical indication criteria that I already showed you. So um, this is another study looking at volume, saying, well, if, is it just the size or the number of the lesions we treat, or is it the volume um, we treat? And again, um, they, they had a cutoff of four milliliters that they treated with higher doses, and a smaller uh, lesions um, they treated uh, no other way around with lower doses. And what they said, they didn't see any difference uh, between the patients that fought four or five lesions. Again, maybe reflecting the cutoff of three slash four uh, lesions for um, whole brain versus um, radio surgery. Now I had another patient I brought as a case. She had multiple brain mats and she had Another special case. And she came to me and said, well, we have that data for multiple brain meds and radio surgery, and uh, can we do it? And I said, well, basically we can do it. We do it on an individual basis. And um, then I looked at the, 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 the case, and she had additionally this lesion here at the meningeal um, region, and she also had a lesion, you cannot see it because the light is very bright here in the retina. And so I said, well, we can treat the brain mats, but we have difficulty treating this in the eye with radio surgery. So what I would recommend would be whole brain radiotherapy. And she said, well, mm, I, I'm really concerned about side effects. And I said, well, we can do a special technique. And that's what we did in this uh, case. We talked about sparing of uh, regions in the brain. And what we spared in this case was the hippocampus. We used the tomotherapy system to treat this patient. We spared the hippocampus. And we had a local increased, uh, increased boost, simultaneous integrated boost to the meningeal um, met and um, then 40 gray and 2 gray single fraction to the whole brain, um, including the affected eye on one side. And um, the patient has a very nice follow-up. It's locally controlled, very nice response. So maybe in this case, it was a good choice to opt for something special and not radio surgery or the normal whole brain, but use a fancy technique um, also in the case of a metastasized patient. What is the rationale? <clears throat> well, in this case, radiation of the whole brain was considered necessary, and I th still think it was. And we know that some areas are responsible for neurocognitive functioning, the hippocampus. And we also know that local dose escalation is possible. Um, so this is um, what we did in this trial. And there is also an RTOG a trial evaluating this concept, uh, really showing us that it can be um, effective and, and safe in these patients. One thing you might be concerned now in the room is um, if we spare the hippocampus, but we have the rationale to treat whole brain, don't we run a risk that the patient develops a metastasis right in that region? Well, yes and no. The risk um, for local metastasis in this region is around 8%. There are a couple of studies who have looked at that. And I think if we have a small lesion in this region, we can salvage it with radio surgery if it really um, should happen um, after this kind of treatment. Oh, this is the follow-up I wanted to show you. Um, treatment in 14 and 15, very nice uh, local control, and she's scheduled to come back sometime um, soon this year. 
So now let me conclude and kind of try to sum up of the different techniques we talked about. And uh, we looked at surgery, we looked at adjuvant whole brain radiotherapy, we looked at the data comparing radiosurgery and whole brain for one to three brain mats, we touched resection cavity radiation, we touched uh, hippocampal sparing, and we touched patients having more than three brain metastases. And then if we want to conclude that and say, well, is there any evidence for patients with three uh, brain metastases to be treated with radiosurgery? Well, not really, because there are no prospective trials. But in the end, I think we should keep in mind we have biological properties with radiosurgery, a high local single dose. Um, we know that the number of brain mat not always predict outcome. Now, we saw different cutoffs. Some cutoffs were really in the range of that three slash four, but some said the cutoff is at nine or maybe 14 lesions. So I think we don't know. And um, in the end, um, if we use radio surgery, we can use biology, we can spare um, regions um, that can prevent side effects. But if we feel we need whole brain radiotherapy, we can need we can use special techniques, whole brain combination with dose escalation and sparing um, of special regions, for example, the hippocampus, as I showed you that one clinical case. And I hope we will have increasing data from observational, retrospective, and ideally um, also um, prospective trials. So in the end, treating patients with brain meds has moved from whole brain for all to very individualized um, treatments. And I think there are a lot of factors you have to look at, and it's beyond the techniques you have available. It's looking at histopathology, molecular markers, maybe also individual radiation sensitivity, immunological properties, immunology also thinking about immune modulary substances that you might give the patient additionally to treatment, and then also patient individual factors such as Karnofsky, diabetes, nutritional state, and so on. So it's very um, individualized in what we do, and each case actually is a special case um, in these patients. And this is the team um, I'm working with, um, just so you see I'm not the only one in that department. This is the, the medical team, so we have 24 um, doctors um, working um, on the different um, parts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that.